Okay, so the final thing we'll talk about um, with our analytic ethics is this notion of accidental evil. And this is um, where organizations don't think about the consequences of their decisions. Um, and then they accidentally create bad things. Um, a really good example of this happened a few years ago. Um, there's a famous web developer who helped invent a whole bunch of um, systems for nice, beautiful HTML and, and CSS styles in your browser named Eric Meyer. Um, and his daughter, five years ago, back in 2015, um, got a rare form of childhood cancer and died. And it was a very um, brutal process for him. He processed it um, through Twitter, through blogs, um, posted about it all the time, posted about it on Facebook. And it was this really public, awful experience for him. Um, and then what happened was a year after she died, um, he got the, the notification that you all get in Facebook that says, here's what happened in the past year, or on this year today, here's what you were doing, um, which they created because that sounds like a really neat thing. Um, they're assuming that everybody's posting happy, positive things on Facebook, and so you're interested in seeing what kind of party you went to three years ago. And so you get a notification in Facebook that says, go look at this, that's neat. Um, what they did here is they gave him basically a review of his past year or the last year with his daughter, all her chemo uh, treatments, um, funeral, all the, the miserable memories of that experience. And that's what Facebook was saying was awesome. It said, here's what your year looked like. Hooray. That's like bad um, because they didn't, whoever created that feature um, to show fun past memories apparently didn't think that people also had bad memories. Um, and so they just assumed that everybody is going to have happy memories and would love to revisit them. Um, and so Facebook, he wrote this, this long article here. You should, if you press P, you can look at it and, and click on the link for the article. Um, Facebook and other organizations have since kind of taken this to heart and said, like, we need to be careful about the memories that we're showing to people um, because it can be bad. We can accidentally cause harm if we don't think about things. Um, another example, um, a few years ago, um, Uber has been practicing um, with self-driving cars, and there was an accident in Arizona where a self-driving Uber SUV ran into a jaywalker and killed them. And part of the reason that happened is because the algorithm that the self-driving car uses to determine if there are obstacles in the road was not programmed to think about jaywalkers. Um, and so it assumed that no person would ever be in a crosswalk um, or just in the middle of the road. And so when it saw something in the middle of the road, it figured it's nothing, it's just a shadow. And it continued and it ran over this person. Um, again, that's kind of in the world of accidental evil right there. They didn't think about potential cases of people not being on a sidewalk. And as a result, lives were lost. Um, Facebook ran into this issue too. Um, in 2016, one of the big plot lines of the, of the 2016 presidential election was the emergence of fake news, um, specifically on Facebook. And so there are a whole bunch of studies that show that like older people were way more likely to share fake news on Facebook than others. And that's because it was really easy to, um, for, for, news, for fake news organizations to post stuff that looked credible. Um, and then old baby boomers jumped all over it and shared it like crazy. Um, and Facebook's platform made it really easy and their algorithm made it really easy. So as more people shared it, that meant it looked relevant to their friends. And so that popped up in their algorithms or in their feeds. And so then they started sharing it and became these super popular stories that were completely fake. And so these bubbled up and had a huge influence in the election because of kind of accidental um, evil here. The designers of the Facebook algorithm didn't consider the possibility that there would be fake news that could bubble up. Um, and so they've had to adjust that in the years since. Facebook or YouTube run in, runs into this problem too. Um, if you press P on your keyboard, if you're following along with the HTML slides, there's a, a fascinating um, long article at the New York Times that is all about how the Facebook, uh, how about how the YouTube algorithm has led lots and lots of people into um, radicalized uh, right-wing ideologies um, because 
um, right-wing groups have been able to game the system where if you go and you start looking at videos about Fortnite or other things that teenage boys like, um, you start watching Fortnite videos and then in the recommended videos sidebar, it starts popping up new videos. So it'll show another thing about Fortnite and then it'll show something about 9-11 denialism. And then it will start showing stuff about white supremacy and neo-Nazism. And it'll start showing other stuff. Um, and it's because white supremacists and other groups like this game the algorithm so that their videos follow more popular videos and kind of lead people down that path, um, which is bad. But the whole reason that happens is because the algorithm was invented specifically to keep people on the site as long as possible and recommend as many videos as possible. So if you press P here, um, you can. there's a link to a short YouTube video here by this guy um, that explains kind of the, the thought process behind YouTube's algorithm and why it's accidentally causing radicalization and, and all sorts of bad things. So I'd recommend doing that. Um, and then not becoming radicalized on YouTube. Um, but it's because they don't necessarily consider the consequences and ramifications of their um, algorithmic choices, which can lead to bad outcomes. Um, there's a common, finally here, this, there's a common theme on Twitter um, where Silicon Valley does stupid things um, and they invent stupid things. Um, basically every six months, some new startup using artificial intelligence and machine learning and data invents eugenics. Um, happens all the time. And so this from CBS is from 2018, I think, um, where a group at Harvard Medical School tried to make a dating app that matched users based on their DNA um, with the goal to eliminate all genetic diseases, which is basically eugenics. Um, or this one here, um, there's an algorithm to to uh, generate trustworthiness evaluations based on facial um, features. Um, so the distance between your eyes and your nose, the size of your forehead, the size of your chin, the spacing of your ears can all determine how trustworthy you are, which sounds neat and fancy, but it's also phrenology, um, which was a debunked science from the 1800s that was used to um, prove that black people were less intelligent and more dishonest than white people because of the shape of their heads and the location of their eyes. Um, so we're basically reinventing eugenics and phrenology every once in a while um, because it's easy to not think about the ethical ramifications of what you're doing. Um, basically here they're just saying let's take a face and make a billion columns about the face and see which one predicts the most trustworthiness. But fundamentally, you're just inventing phrenology, and that's not great. Um, so moral of the story is keep ethics in mind as you are doing any sort of analysis, especially with human-based data. Um, you don't want to manipulate people. You don't want to have bias built into your data and to your results. And you don't want to accidentally invent eugenics, um, or you don't want to do any sort of accidental evil. Think about people. Um, keep that as your main focus as you're doing your analysis, and hopefully you won't do bad things.